Hello world. Welcome back to the Wayward Realms. I'm Gregory Jackson. In the previous episode, I mentioned that the world of the Wayward Realms will be very large and that that'll be made possible through the use of procedural generation. But what exactly does that mean? Games like No Man's Sky and Minecraft use procedural generation to create large-scale worlds for the player to experience. The Elder Scrolls II, Daggerfall, also used procedural generation for its world generation. And recently, Bethesda Game Studios used procedural generation in Starfield. Now there's been a lot of discussion in the gaming community about the practicality of using procedural generation. Some people feel that the usage of procedural generation is boring and repetitive, and in some cases it can be. The way that it works is that it pulls from a collection of elements randomly. If there aren't enough elements in the collection, then they tend to repeat themselves very noticeably, and that can lead to a boring experience. For the best results with procedural generation, you want a lot of different element types and a lot of variations of each type. While the selection of the elements may be random, it's also driven by rules that have been put in place by the developers to make sure that the elements that are selected and placed into the world make sense. The Wayward Realms is being developed using the Unreal Engine, which includes some very powerful procedural generation tools. Let's take a look at a short presentation showing off how this is achieved through Unreal Engine. So we're gonna drive under this fallen tree here, and everything that you've seen up to this point was painstakingly hand-built by the environment team at Quixel. Everything since that fallen tree has been built using our brand new experimental suite of procedural content generation tools, entirely an engine that are flexible, deterministic, and artist-driven. Our guiding principle in building these systems was to empower artists to make tools for artists. So Jacob's gonna go ahead and add a procedural assembly to the world. And the cool thing is that it communicates. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> and the cool thing is that it communicates with other nearby procedural elements in the scene, like the creek bed. So let's say a designer comes by, wants to direct the player to drive to the left. Jacob can simply move the assembly to the right, and everything updates to accommodate that change. Game design is iterative, so let's say the designer comes back, wants to give the player the choice of going left or right again, Jacob can simply move the assembly back over. Now the artist who created this assembly also added some additional handles that Jacob can use to art direct where rock slides occur. Allows him to customize the piece a little bit more, make it a little easier for the Rivian to drive by. So we started by handcrafting that original part of the level to set the visuals and art direction for the entire piece and then built out procedural tools that allowed the team to create a much larger play space much more quickly. Now let's see how we can use these procedural tools to make larger sweeping changes to the environment. So Jacob, let's start by removing some of the trees in this area. Absolutely, that's easy enough actually. All right, <laughs> a little too much, let's, let's add some trees back in. Okay. And let's also add in some cliff formations, give it a little bit more variability. So the procedural systems are all deterministic. As Jacob is experimenting with different sets of input parameters, once he finds a set that he likes, he can always go back to it and get out exactly the same results. And the procedural systems aren't just placing trees and rocks, but also fog cards, bugs, birds, everything that's needed to bring this environment to life. And everything that you've seen here works at scale. This environment is four kilometers by four kilometers. If we hide all of the procedural elements, we can see that original hand-built area about 200 meters by 200 meters. We believe that there will always be the need for hand-building environments, so we design these procedural systems to be tools for artists that work in concert with hand-built content. Both Substrate and the new procedural tools will be available in experimental form in 5.2. And everything you've seen here is running in the Unreal Editor in real time on a developer machine with an Intel 13900K CPU and NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU. So Jacob, thanks for being here and helping us out today. Thank you very much, Nick, for having me. It's been a pleasure. So now that we've seen procedural generation in action in the Unreal Engine itself, 
Let's take a look at the first devlog for the Wayward Realms and let Julian LaFay tell us more. Hi, I'm Julian LaFay, the creator of The Elder Scrolls Arena and Daggerfall, games that establish new precedents, both procedural generation and scope of open world games. I'm thrilled today to share some of the exciting systems we're working on to help bring our vision for the Wayward Realms to a new era, leveraging the power of modern tools, especially Unreal Engine. First, our procedural generation systems. From a living landscape reflecting a natural creation process covering 200,000 square kilometers, down to buildings with a wide variety of layout, styles, textures, and degradation, and going down further still to the dungeons, equally varied, featuring multi-leveled layouts that can be generated at runtime using a combination of techniques, all emulating the mind of a human creator. Working together in unison, these systems and many more will create a role-playing experience that will exceed expectations. So what we can take away from that devlog is that the procedural generation will be able to produce some very intricate dungeons, including furniture and even enemy population. Now the footage that we were shown is extremely early in the design process. It was produced over a year ago. They've made a lot of advancements since then and uh, quality will continue to improve as we move closer to the uh, early access. Links to both of these videos will be provided in the description below. That's going to be all for this episode. Next time, we're going to be taking a look at some of the questions that the community has been asking about the Wayward Realms and what Once Lost Games has said in response. Thank you for watching the Wayward Realms commentaries. I'm Gregory Jackson, and I'll see you next time.